Okay, uh, today's tutorial is on uh, collision detection. We're only covering rectangle collision detection today. We'll be looking at other versions as we go on through different tutorials. Um, just for clarity's sake, collision detection is where we're looking to see whether or not sprites overlap each other. So typically the sort of thing we're talking about is your player sprite hitting a wall or a bullet or your bullets hitting an alien or any of those sorts of things. Uh, to do that we have to write some additional code. Um, the first thing is we're going to do an example here where we're creating some immovable objects. So things on the, that basically on the screen when the player bumps against them they cannot pass through them. So to do that I've started off by creating a static block, block class. Okay, and that's based on abstract sprite that we've been using before. Uh, it's only got some very rudimentary properties. It's just to show really for you visually that uh, something's actually happened. So we've created a, a boolean called hit, which is initially set as false, um, which will modify when there's a collision. And then based on whether this, is, this hit is set true or false, it will set the color of the block either to red or its normal color. Um, so the obvious thing to say is that this is in the update method so every screen update if there's a collision it will flash it red um, and obviously there's a reset there so that once it's done it once it resets it back to its normal colour. So that's just the same as when we were inheriting before um, but it's based on abstract sprite. So the reason it's based on abstract sprite is because it gives us all the basic functionality we had before um, and it will auto draw itself. The other thing as well is that when we use abstract sprite there is a variable in there called rough collision and this is a rectangle basically it represents the dimensions of your sprite so how big the sprite is itself and also its location on the screen as a consequence of that we have two rectangles that we can easily look to see whether or not they're overlapping that rectangles updated on a regular basis so every time the screen updates the rough collision is updated based on where the thing is on the screen and also the scale right so how do we make use of that well first of all we have to create some new static objects on the screen that our player can interact with so I've just created this class static block so I'll call it block and I'll have two on there because that will make it a little bit easier to understand what's going on Lock B ok so that's created variables for them the next thing is to actually populate those variables so we'll do the same as we were before I'll have to type that one fresh I think Lock A equals a new static lock this game and we'll use the same graphic Ooh, can't spell today okay we need two of those block B as well obviously if you were dealing with a number of these it would be better to use a loop to fill them in We'll talk about that if we get a little bit more complex. So in the game constructor we've now created two um, static block objects stored in block A and block B. Next thing is to add them to the initialize method to make sure that they're actually on screen and drawn. Um, other things that we might want to do is also set their position so there's not a collision as soon as we start on the screen. So we'll start with that. Okay. Position. And as our sprites working at 100, 100, we'll do 200, 200. We're definitely not going to collide because the uh, blocks are 54 pixels in size. Okay, so that's the first one. Duplicate that, and just change that to block B. And then we'll put them all diagonally, 300 by 300. Very specifically, I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so that's position them, and then we just need to add them to the game components. OK, 
Okay, uh, just for the sake of making it easier to see for the player sprite, I think we'll just set its tint so that it looks different to the others. Okay, so that should give it a bit better colour definition. Right, at this stage, what we've done is we've actually set things up so that we can um, run this game. Um, it won't actually do any collision detection at that point, but I'll just demonstrate. Here we go, look, so we've got the, the greenish coloured sprite that's our player controlled element. Um, at the moment, no collision detection takes place. We can just fly around that and it's not going to do anything at all. Now, ideally, we would expect that that would be able to slip through there and not hit anything. Right, so what we now need to do is we need to write some code to actually make all of this work. So in our player class, um, we need to actually deal with the idea of collision first of all. Um, it's not particularly difficult. What we'll start with is creating a new method because it's nice to be a little bit controlled and rather than pad everything out into one big method where everything gets difficult to manage. So um, first of all it's private because we only want to use it inside there. Um, we're going to return a boolean true or false as to whether it's collided or not our player. So very boolean. Um, and we'll call the method uh, hit static locking so we're consistent in our naming strategy uh, we don't have to pass it anything because we're inside the class we've got all the variables we need uh, and the first thing we'll do is we'll return false to ensure that when no collisions take place we just immediately get a default value right now very simply at this point we need to just be clear about how we actually look at all these different components on the screen. Uh, you, you're aware of how to write loops and I'm sure you've come across for each before but what we can do is we can create um, a for each statement that allows us to go through all of a particular type of um, game component. So because we've created a game component static block, this the convenience of that is we can just look through just static blocks in the game components instead of all of them. If I do for each, okay, and then what we want is we want a static block. Okay, and we'll call it block. And at that point, what we can then do is we can just Sorry for the uh, pause there for a second. I'm just making sure we get everything in right. So perhaps in a second. Right, what we've done is we've created a loop that's going to loop through the game components. So we've got the reference to this game, which is what was passed in when we created our uh, instance of the player in the first place. And that reference is our main game, the game components, and then we use the of type method and it says right what type do you want to look for in this case we're looking for static block all right so that's returned back all of the static blocks in game components so we're going to work on each one in turn and it will get pushed into this block variable that we can actually then manipulate so obviously if we're doing a for each and we want to keep good practice we'll actually allow ourselves a little bit of uh, open and close curly brackets first. So this is where the collision detection is actually going to take place. So what we've actually done is very quickly 
got to the point where we can make a decision as to whether something's intersected or not. So if I go if, and then we can use the rough collision on the player, so that's a rectangle, and it's got a method called intersects. Okay, and what you put as a parameter is another rectangle. So we're going to use the block that we've just found in our game components, and then we can get its rough collision rectangle. Okay, so at that point, what we said is if that player block intersects the block itself, we can now return true. So that's fine. That now means that we're going to look through each individual static block in the game components and if there's a collision we'll return true. Just for visually making things a little bit better as well, we put block dot hit equals true. That means that that block will then flash because we've already put some code in for that. All right, so that's collision detection taken care of. But what it hasn't done is it hasn't taken account of the fact that we actually have to deal with the, the collision. We have to stop the player from moving. So to improve that, we now need to actually put some code in to stop it from moving. So what we need to do is we need to keep track of the player's old position and the old collision rectangle. So we'll start with a vector 2 for the position. set a value and just put whole position and a rectangle for old position. Okay. So what we now need to do very quickly is when we get a collision, notice I'm writing this after the update statement, that's because we will have only moved the sprite after it's done an update. So if static block so if it returns true we've hit something so first of all in our update method we store the old positions old position and old collision old collision equals rough collision so collision before we updated it and old position equals position. Okay, so they're records of the sprite before it's moved. And then if we've hit, we now need to restore them. So there's no problems. Okay, so our position position equals all position. Rough collision equals old collision. Okay, so at that point what we've done is we've now said that they are restored back to their original state. The only other thing we need to do is we just need to kill direction as well. So direction equals vector 2 not 0. So we're not moving anywhere. Okay, at that point our code's actually completed. If we compile and run it We're now at a stage where collisions will occur. Okay, so that's fine. But now the big problem we're going to have, and we'll look at it in the next tutorial, is we'll also collide here. Because we're looking at a box and a circle against a circle. We'll have corners that we don't want to collide. We can't even get through that gap anymore now. So we'll look at collisions again. In the next tutorial and we'll look to see how we can improve that but that's this tutorial done for today